So in the last lesson, we took a look at the documentation for Enigma.js. So you should now have some idea of what the Enigma.js library is doing. So it's a JavaScript library for consuming the Click Associative Engine by accessing the Click Engine. And we've also used some of the different methods uh, using the Engine API Explorer uh, that we can access using Enigma.js. So as we've covered, Enigma.js is not dependent on Require.js or other libraries like the Capability APIs is, um, and we can use it, we can use Enigma.js in both a server or client-side projects. So it is recommended that we actually use and install Enigma.js using Node Package Manager, so actually in a server-side project. And that is how we're going to be using it in our project during this section. It's really a useful thing to you to learn, and we're gonna be using Webpack to, to build that, that project. However, we can also access the Enigma library on the client side. And I just want to show you a very quick example of how we can do that, which might come in handy if you want to build some, uh, some maybe smaller projects with just client side code. And it's a lot simpler to get started than the capability APIs because you do not have that requirement on Require.js. You just load the library, then you can access your schema version and start accessing the engine. So let's go through that now. Just very quickly before we get started, so on the Enigma.js homepage on GitHub, if you scroll right down to the bottom, there is an example here of how we do get started using Enigma.js on the, the client side. So we're loading the Enigma.js library and then we are accessing the schema. So this can obviously change depending on the schema you want to access. And then we're, we're opening that connection uh, via WebSocket to the engine. So our example is just going to be basically this. Um, we, we're gonna, I'm going to take you through it line by line. Uh, you can copy and paste this in um, if you want and, and play around yourselves. But this is the example that I'm going to follow just to show you how we'd actually get started with a Enigma.js client-side project. Okay. So I've opened the hub, so do log on to ClickSense, make sure you can access the hub. We will be needing this for uh, to access the engine. And I'm going to create a new folder, so I'm going to open a new Visual Studio. Let's go to our mashup project files, project, projects, and I'm going to create a folder called Enigma.js. In this, I'm going to create a folder called app. And then I'm going to select this folder to start our project. So I'm going to create one index.html file. Let's load in our boilerplate code. And I'm just going to call this Enigma example. Let's copy the path. Let's just load that into Google Chrome and also bring up the console. So we've got our Enigma example loaded. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep our code in script tags. So we'll have one set of script tags to load our library, and then we can put our code once we've accessed the library into this second set of script tags. So we wanna load the library and if you go back to the github page at the bottom here they do have you know the the library here for us to just copy and paste so i'm going to load the enigma.js library into our project and you can see it's nice as nice and easy just like loading any other library you know like bootstrap and jquery so no comp complexity around uh, enigma.js sorry no complexity around require.js or other dependencies so once we've loaded the library, we want to now fetch the schema version and convert that into a JSON format. So once again, just switching back, you can see it's hosted in this um, package on pkg.com, but I'm just going to copy the schema version. And we can add a dot then, um, as we know that Enigma.js is a promise-based library. So this is a synchronous JavaScript. Once we have fetched the library, then we can do something only after this is completed. 
and we're going to actually convert the response into JSON. And here we need our arrow syntax functions. So we're converting our response into JSON format. And then we can create our session. So again, I'm going to use the arrow syntax to create a function. I'm going to pass a variable called schema. And I'm going to create a variable which contains our session. So const session equals and then enigma dot create. And when we create our session, we need our schema, which we're passing into this function from our response. We then need the URL, which is going to link to our ClickSense engine. And then we need to create our WebSocket. So remember, we're creating a WebSocket connection. So for our URL, we can take a look at the hub. You can see we're on our local host 4848. So I'm just going to copy that. And we know it's a WebSocket connection. We don't need the HTTP, so it's a WebSocket connection to localhost on port 4848 and then app slash engine data. And we can take that URL and we're going to open a WebSockets connection to that URL string. And that's more or less it for creating our connection. We can just now open a session. So session.open, we can open a session to the engine. And then we're going to access the global scope. So I'm just going to console log this global parameter that we're passing. And let's have a look to see if that has all worked as we'd expect. And you can see now we've got a JavaScript object returned to the engine, and you can see this is the global generic type. So if you remember back to the first lesson of this section, where we actually explored the engine API, uh, all of those methods available at the global, um, the global level will be now available for us to use in this project. And we can explore the session that we've created. So if you open session and then definition and then schema, we can see a number of the methods here that we can access. You can see we've got the global method. And just like in the example on the GitHub page, we should be able to get the version. You can see we've got here engine version, so we can try that. So let's replace our console log with global.get. It's actually just global.engine version and if you remember from our previous lesson uh, we need to it's camel casing for when we want to use the methods in enigma.js so I can just console um, console log our engine version we can actually grab the engine version and then grab the result console log the results. You can see that we've got the engine version then returned in our console. So that is all for this lesson. So it's just an example of how we can start using Enigma.js in client side projects. So we've create, we've connected to the click engine and then we've just accessed the global scope. So in the next lesson, we're going to take this a little bit further. We're going to connect to an application, and then we're just going to create a hypercube uh, based off the data model in that application. So we're kind of moving on our 
level of knowledge to maybe a use case which we might use when creating mashups.